Hello guys, now you will hear a brief summary of the movie Blank Check. Enjoy. 11-year-old Preston dreams of having his own room. His father is obsessed with business and wants his children to learn how to earn money on their own. Preston's older brothers set up an office in his room, complete with a computer, even though they don't know how to use it. Using a text-to-speech program, the boy teases his brothers and they bully him in return. On his way to a classmate's birthday party, Preston only receives $2, which he manages to exchange for six tokens. While all the other kids enjoy the amusement park rides, Preston settles for the baby swings because they are the cheapest option. When he returns home, the boy tries to understand why his parents don't give him any money. After all, they are not poor. Frederick and Sandra Waters are meticulous with their finances and count every penny. The parents believe that Preston should achieve everything on his own and not ask them for money. Deciding to spoil Preston before his birthday, they give him a letter from his grandmother, expecting to find a substantial amount on a bank check. Preston is disappointed when he realizes the old lady forgot to fill in the amount. His parents believe that $11 will be sufficient for him. However, Preston, who dreams of having a million dollars, calculates how long it would take him to reach that goal and learns that it would take hundreds of years. Having escaped from prison and uncovered a hiding spot, Quigley retrieves a suitcase filled with money. He goes to the banker, Edward Biderman, demanding to exchange the bills as their numbers are known to the police. The next day, at exactly 13 o'clock, a trusted man named Juice will come for the money. Meanwhile, Preston arrives at the bank and approaches a bank employee named Shay to make his first deposit and open a savings account. It turns out that the minimum deposit amount is $200 and the little boy needs to save up some more money. Preston's classmate, who stole his grandmother's check, tries to run away. The boy chases after him but falls off his bike at one point. Unaware of the child, quickly accidentally rides over Preston's bike. Trying to make up for his mistake, the man gives Preston the check but, upon seeing the police, flees the scene without specifying the compensation amount on the check. Tired of living under the rules of his parents, who scrutinize every penny, Preston decides to start a new life and uses the blank check. He writes the amount of $1 million in the empty space and goes to sleep, hoping his plan will work. In the morning, Preston tries to cash the check. Mistaking him for a prankster, the woman directs the boy to the director's office. Seeing that the check is from Quigley and it's almost one o'clock, Edward mistakes Preston for a boy named Juice and hands him the money. After taking the million dollars in cash, Preston runs out of the bank. At the same time, Juice arrives at the bank. Edward realizes his mistake, but it's too late to find the boy. On his way home, Preston notices that his neighbors are selling a luxurious stone castle. Dreaming of having his own home, the boy calls a realtor. Using a voice assistant, he negotiates with Quigley and offers $300,000 for the castle. Aware that they won't sell the house to a child, Preston pretends to be Mr. McIntosh. When Quigley arrives at the bank, he threatens Edward and learns that the entire sum was handed over to the boy. Shay, a secret FBI agent working undercover, notices suspicious activity and reports everything to her superiors, believing that the bank owner is involved in money laundering. While under house arrest, Preston escapes from home and orders a limousine with a driver. Henry doesn't take the boy seriously until he sees a bundle of money and listens to him. The young millionaire entertains himself by playing basketball, baseball, video games, and buying every piece of clothing he sees along the way. Upon returning home, he notices Shay and tells her that he has $200 for the initial deposit the next morning. Preston's father can't go to work because the street is blocked by trucks unloading Mr. McIntosh's purchases. Afraid to admit the lie, Preston claims to work for a respected man who bought the neighboring castle. Creating a full-fledged amusement park, Preston has a great time with Henry and indulges in everything. After receiving money from a realtor who sold the stone castle, Shay checks the bills and discovers they are marked by the FBI. Learning that Mr. McIntosh became the property owner, she suspects him of money laundering and devises a plan to capture him. When she arrives at the house bought by McIntosh, Shay hopes for a meeting but only sees young Preston enjoying himself in the mansion. The boy informs her that the businessman is busy and invites her on a date. Lacking experience in relationships, he asks Henry to share his experiences and tell him how to win a girl's heart. Upon returning home, 
Preston tells his father that he needs to leave in the evening, but Frederick objects as his son is grounded. Using a ruse, Preston tells his father that he showed Mr. McIntosh his father's project and he is interested in funding the idea. Touched, Frederick lets his son go, hoping to establish a partnership with Mr. McIntosh. In the evening, the affluent boy meets Shay, takes care of her, and treats her to exquisite dishes. Feeling uncomfortable, he falls off a chair and suggests going to another cafe for burgers. After dinner, Shay and Preston have a great time. Quigley, Juice and Edward, who have been constantly searching for the boy, finally manage to locate him, but Preston eludes their pursuit. After the date, a bank employee reminds Preston that she would really like to see Mr. McIntosh, so Preston invites her to a party at his mansion. Frederick nervouses that none of his sons are at home and learns that they all work for Mr. McIntosh. Preston teases his brothers to make them perform demeaning tasks for a few dollars. While preparing for the party, the boy hires a manager to allow the woman to organize an incredible celebration. Upon noticing Quigley again, Edward and Juice chase him. Trying to escape, Preston loses his briefcase but narrowly avoids the chronos. Seeing a passerby pick up the briefcase, he manages to retrieve the money and elude the pursuit. The criminals, unwilling to give up, find one of Preston's classmates and threaten him to reveal information about the boy and where he lives. During the party preparations, Henry warns Preston to be cautious. In the modern world, many people are greedy and only befriend those who have money. When Preston meets Shay, he feels sad that she is only interested in the mysterious house owner. Seeing an attractive beauty, his brothers warn Preston that such girls are only after wealthy men. The evening comes and respected guests gather at the castle to congratulate the millionaire. Shay wears a listening device and also attends the party to apprehend Mr. McIntosh. The party organizer can't find the host and asks Preston to pay the bills. Taking the check, Preston goes to his office and learns that he has just over $300 in his account but owes $100,000 for the party. At that moment, Preston's father enters McIntosh's office. Unable to see who is sitting in the chair, he asks the man to let his son go home as it's his birthday. Frederick feels like a bad father for mistreating the boy and not providing him with money. Now he realizes how wrong he was and wants to change his attitude towards his son. After forgiving his father, Preston tries to catch up with him but fails. Soon he learns that Henry has left and considers him a traitor who was only friends with him for money. Shay finds the stat child and wants to see McIntosh. Realizing that she is also only after money, Preston dismisses her. Returning to the party, the boy reveals that the businessman has gone bankrupt and everyone leaves McIntosh's house. Preston is left all alone, feeling sad and abandoned. Hearing a knock on the door, he thinks it's Henry returning, but instead finds the criminals who want to recover the stolen money. The boy confesses that he spent a million dollars and that Mr. Macintosh was a fabrication. Quickly, evading the police, decides to use that name and start a new life. Running away from the criminals, Preston taunts Edward, shoots Juice with baseballs, and throws Quigley into a metal ball in the pool. After joining forces, the bandits catch him, but at that moment they are surrounded by FBI agents searching for McIntosh. Quigley claims that he is the mysterious businessman, accusing the man of fraud and money laundering. The FBI agent arrests him along with the banker Edward and Juicer. Left alone with Preston, Shea confesses that their date was the best thing that ever happened to her and asks the young boy to call her when he comes of age. She kisses the little bankrupt as a farewell. Upon meeting his father, the boy decides not to tell him the whole truth about Mr. McIntosh. As Preston steps outside, he encounters Henry and realizes that he is a true friend who simply left the party to buy him an ice cream bucket. When Preston returns home, a surprise awaits him. Understanding that he has everything he needs, the boy thanks his brothers and parents for the gift. Looking at Shay's photo, he realizes that there is still something missing and makes a wish as he blows out the candles. And that's the complete tale, folks. Now, what would you spend a million dollars on? Write your wildest ideas and desires in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss new videos.